Today's video is all about John Mayer's favorite clean boost, the Keeley Katana. This is one of the pedals that's been on his board for the longest period of time. Consistently, really since about 2004, the Keeley Katana has been a part of John Mayer's rig. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over a handful of examples of when John Mayer actually uses it to give you guys some better context as to when he's using a clean boost in his rig. Let's get into today's video. While John Mayer has stuck consistently with the version one Keeley Katana, the original one that Keeley has made, Keeley does offer a full size version that is kind of a reissue of the V1 sound, as well as the Katana Mini and Honestly, both of those versions that they currently produce are gonna get you the sound, but specifically for today's purposes, we're really focusing on the version one Keeley Katana that John Mayer uses, just so that you guys are aware that he has specifically stuck with the original version that was made. The last little bit of context I'll give you guys around the Katana and how John uses it before we get to the examples is that John always keeps the knob in on the Keeley Katana. There's one example of him using the knob out for the boost function in the loop of the Qtron Plus, but really for today's examples, we're looking at it with the knob pushed in. And then as well for settings, John does like a considerable volume boost with the Keeley Katana. His settings are usually around five to six, sometimes as low as four, but whatever sounds great with your rig is how you're obviously gonna wanna set it, but that's just kind of where John's settings normally lie with the Keeley Katana. So let's get into those examples. So for our first example here, we're gonna look at Love is a Verb, one of my favorite songs that John has made, especially off of Born and Raised. That's my favorite song off of that album. For sure. Now we have some really great footage of John actually during the 2019 World Tour rehearsals and once it comes to the solo you see John clearly step on the Keeley Katana to give him a nice volume boost for the solo. The solo of course isn't an overdriven sound so something like the TS-10 or even the way he kind of sets the clon isn't going to sound the same as when he just could step on the Keeley Katana and have just a pure clean boost with his sound. Let's take a look at that example. Very special shout out to my good friend Gabe for that rehearsal footage. It just looked like an amazing time. And moving on from that footage there, oh, fun fact actually, that's one of the few times we've ever seen John using an Onyx Silver Sky. One of the few colors he really just didn't use that often, which is quite a shame. I love that finish, especially with the kind of gray kind of finish change they did in the horn of the Silver Sky, how it's not just the pure Onyx Black. On the rest of the guitar, you actually get more of a silver gray color in it. It's fantastic. If they did that with a maple neck, oh my God, I'd be all over an Onyx Silver Sky like that. All right, this is me from the future, at least of the time I recorded this video. I messed up something I said in the Edge of Desire part of this video, which is the next example we're talking about. So I'm just gonna reshoot it now for you guys. Um, so our next example is Edge of Desire, and this is a great example of when John will use humbuckers, but still rely on the Keeley Katana for a nice clean boost. Now, right after the second chorus, when it kind of goes into the bridge before the solo, is when John would normally step on the Keeley Katana in order just to accentuate those really powerful chords that he plays before he launches into the solo, which is still the usual combination of Tube Screamer and Klon for the most part. But that Keeley Katana is also on for the solo, but just for the bridge specifically, that's what he adds on in order just to give more punch to his sound. And again, just a really cool example of him doing that same thing with humbuckers, even though the humbuckers are pushing his entire rig a little bit more.
we are going to stick with the Sob Rock era for a moment here for our next example. And this example is unfortunately one where I don't have any footage of John stepping on the Kiwi Katana, but I think you guys will all agree with me that the logic here makes sense. Now, on a nightly basis, pretty much, when John would launch into Belief, that tone in that intro solo is very different when you compare it to the majority of other solos you'd hear that night. It's a lot more punchy, it's a lot louder, and it's a lot more kind of just in your face kind of sound. It's his best tone of the tour, in my opinion, at least, that specific intro solo on a nightly basis. Now, we know he's stacking the TS-10 into the Klon Centaur for that solo, but because that solo is just so much more punchy and there is, you know, a considerable volume boost at that time, and even the clean parts of the song, like when he launches just into the intro main part of Belief, his clean signal is so much louder than it is on Slow Dancing the Burning Room, for example. You can just hear the difference. I believe that he's using the Kili Katana on pretty much the entire time for Belief. And that's kind of the difference maker between that and some of his other solo tones as well. Now, John, during the Saw Brock era, would also stack the Kili Katana on if he felt he needed an extra boost, like for a Slow Dancing the Burning Room outro solo. But Belief was consistently different sounding compared to his main kind of lead sound on a given night. So my view here and my kind of, you know, bet, I guess, is that the Kili Katana is what he's using to boost his lead solo tone signal for that intro, and then he turns off the TS-10 and the Quant Centaur, leaving the Kili Katana on for just the main parts of the rest of the song. <laughs> Next we're going to take a look at Still Feel Like Your Man, and for this example we're actually going back to the 2019 World Tour. Now at the Nippo Budokan show in 2019, after John performs New Light, you actually see him turn on the Kili Katana before he launches into Still Feel Like Your Man. And again, just another song where he wants his clean sound to be a little bit more punchy, a little bit louder than before, and of course dynamic wise, he can also tweak with his volume knob to kind of, you know, adjust from there once the katana is boosting his signal but just for those you know kind of funky rhythm parts he's playing keep the katana just boosting that sound for the song <laughs> Our last example here is going to be for a song that we've talked about quite a lot on the channel recently just by virtue of the use of effects that John uses during the song. And it's Vultures. Now, while Vultures wasn't a song John performed a ton during the Saw Rock era, we have some really great footage of him performing it in Atlanta on the second night. And when John launches into Vultures, you know, his clean sound is fantastic. It's a bit punchier again than normal. And you actually see him after the intro, right before the vocals kick in, go to his pedal board and turn off a pedal, and there's a noticeable volume drop. Now, again, this is one of those cases where we can't actually see what exact pedal he's stepping on, but 
I think it's a pretty good chance, you know, better than a pretty good chance, <laughs> that it's the Keeley Katana. And he's just using that to boost that intro part of his sound, that intro section, boost his signal a little bit, make it a bit louder, and then when the vocals come in, he turns it off and doesn't need it on. Now, don't confuse the Keeley Katana as being what John uses for kind of the little solo licks that he plays throughout the song. Those are actually stacked with the TS-10 instead and not the Keeley Katana. So just a difference in effects that John's using for vultures at different times during the song there. But this example, again, I think it's pretty, 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 pretty clear, you know, that John would be using the Keeley Katana for this part. Hey everyone, me from the future, at least of the time I originally recorded this video. In order to make it more comprehensive, there's one more example I wanted to include in this video for you guys. And it's from the 2007 Walmart Soundcheck. Now, if you guys don't know the 2007 Walmart Soundcheck is, essentially in the early mid 2000s, Walmart actually ran a series of sound checks. And John did one during the Continuum Era, kind of right before the Continuum Era actually kicked off that was released in 2007, but filmed in 2006. And during this example here, we're looking at vultures again, but it's just a really great shot of his pedal board that he was kind of experimenting with before the kind of final Continuum Era rig was set up, which actually moved from a standard pedal board to a Bradshaw switching system rig and all the pedals actually in a rack unit. But on this pedal board here, you see when he starts to kind of kick into vultures before the rest of the band joins, he's kind of just messing around and stepping on the Keeley Katana and then he activates it for just a little bit of a lead line. And it's worth noting that at this time on this specific pedal board, he actually didn't have any drive pedals on it at all. He was experimenting with a bit of more um, gain from the amps, like using overdrive channels with some of the amps, like the 2Rock and stuff like that. But really, um, this was just a very experimental time for John before the Continuum Era actually kicked off. And this look at him using the Keeley Katana and just giving you guys a really good example in context of what his sound is like without the Katana and then how the boost activates in for vultures like this. You can just hear that nice kick and noticeable decibel boost of volume that he gets from the Keeley Katana. Also, it's another great example actually of the Aquapus, the Mark 1 AP2 actually being on. You clearly see the LED on um, at the start of the clip you guys are about to see, and it's very rare that we actually get to see the LED on of the Mark 1 Aquapus because it's very dim and it just kind of blends in with the knobs. So that's really cool as well. Just a great example that I didn't want to leave out in this video for you guys. So hopefully today's video discussing the Keeley Katana and when John Mayer uses it has helped give you guys a little bit better context and understanding of when clean boost is an important part of his sound. I know some people think that the Katana is one of those pedals that's always on, which just is not true at all. Clearly from this footage here, you see him choosing specific moments to use the Keeley Katana in the context of his rig, especially in the last two tours, which is kind of my main focus for tones at this time, especially on the channel. Maybe at a later point, we'll go doing a deep dive as to you know later shows, but these past two tours are kind of where the main focus tone-wise is right now, at least kind of the modern era of John's sound at the very least. And hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I also, earlier on in the channel's um, you know years, I actually did a video kind of going over the different versions of the Keeley Katana. I'll card that and link that in the description down below as well for you guys to check out. Just give some more context as to all the different versions of the Keeley Katana that's been uh, created. And until the next time, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Take care. 
We'll see you on the next one. Anyway, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you like what you see.